we see colors everywhere around us. In plants, we see color in their leaves, in their petals and in their fruits. Have you ever wondered where these colors are present inside the plant cell? And what are these colors for? Today we are going to talk about exactly that. Plastids that impart color to different parts of the plants. Hello everyone, welcome to Manocha Academy and today we are going to discuss about chloroplasts, chromoplasts and leucoplasts. The term plastid was introduced by Ernst Haeckel in 1866. This is another semi-autonomous cell organelle in a cell. We have already learnt about mitochondria which is semi-autonomous because it has its own DNA and protein synthesizing machinery. Plastids are formed from protoplastids which are the origin of all three types of plastids. Let us talk about the different types of plastids that can be found in plants. Chromoplasts. Chromoplasts are those colored plastids which contain pigments other than green. So if you can see any part of a plant, for example petals or fruits, ripe fruits where you can see bright red, orange, yellow or even purple color, those are the parts that contain chromoplasts. The word chromoplasts come from the word chrome or chroma meaning color. So these plastids have pigments which have variety of colors apart from green. The chromoplasts they are present in skin of the fruits, ripe fruits, petals etc. where they mainly attract insects for pollination or they attract animals for dispersal of seed. So an animal would get attracted by the bright color of a ripe fruit, eat the fruit and throw away the seed and in that process the seed gets dispersed or the bright color of the petal might attract a pollinator who would come attracted by the color to the flower and in the process pollinate. Chromoplasts can get converted into chloroplasts or they can be formed from chloroplasts or leucoplasts. You must have seen that a mango when it is raw or any other fruit when it is raw it is green in color but slowly as it ripens it becomes colored either orange, red etc and this is because the green color which is because of chlorophyll or chloroplast changes into chromoplasts. Usually the pigments inside the chromoplast they are stored in the form of crystals and that is why chromoplasts are mostly needle shaped with sharp edges. They do not have proper formation of grana inside them like we would find in chloroplasts but they can get converted into chloroplasts if necessary. The pigments that are present inside the chromoplasts are usually carotenoids which consist of carotene and xanthophyll. Now carotene is an orange colored pigment that we find very abundantly in carrots and xanthophyll is a yellow colored pigment which we find frequently in banana. The yellow color of ripe banana is because of xanthophyll. Apart from these carotenoids that is carotene and xanthophyll, chromoplasts can have several other types of pigments which impart variety of colors to different fruits and flowers. Leucoplasts. Leucoplasts are the colorless plastids that are present in those parts of the plant body where we see no color or parts which are white or appear white in color. For example, inside the stem, in the inner part of the root or in storage organs like potatoes. Leucoplasts are responsible for storage in plants and since they store starch, proteins and lipids, Starch imparts a whitish color to leucoplasts. Structurally, leucoplasts have an outer membrane, but the inner membrane lack any organization forming grana or they do not contain chloroplasts in them. 
there are three types of leucoplasts on the basis of what type of food they store. Elioplasts are those leucoplasts that store lipid. Alluroplasts or proteoplasts store proteins and amyloplasts are leucoplasts that store carbohydrates mostly in the form of starch. Sometimes these leucoplasts have been shown to evolve or change into other types of plastids for example chloroplasts or chromoplasts. But the main function of leucoplast is still to store food in different parts of the plant body. Let's talk about chloroplasts now. The word chloroplast comes from two words chloros meaning grass green and plastids meaning molds. The chloroplasts are the green plastids which contain chlorophyll in them. These are essentially present in eukaryotic cells mostly in plant cells and in algal cells and are absent even in photosynthetic protists. For prokaryotic cells which are photosynthetic in nature they have simple sac like structure called chromatophores which contain pigments for photosynthesis in them. But chloroplast or an organized chlorophyll containing plastid is absent in case of prokaryotes. Usually in algae there is one or single chloroplast present inside each cell. In eukaryotes and higher plants there are several chloroplasts and the number of chloroplasts vary. It depends on which part of the plant this cell is. If the cell is receiving a large amount of sunlight that cell is supposed to have more chloroplasts than the cells which receive less amount of sunlight. The chloroplastids vary in shape as well. You must have heard about or seen a spirogyra. Here in this spirogyral cell we find a single chloroplast which is spirally coiled. In case of Chlamydomonas again there is a single chloroplast which is cup shaped. In Zygnema we find chloroplasts which are polygonal in shape. So you can understand that depending on which species we are talking about the shape, size and number of chloroplasts vary. Let us talk about a typical chloroplast of a eukaryotic cell. The ultrastructure of a chloroplast shows that it is a double membrane bound structure. The outer membrane and the inner membrane both are smooth. However, the outer membrane is permeable whereas the inner membrane is selectively permeable. Just like we see in case of mitochondria. In between the two membranes there is a space which is known as the periplastidal space. Inside the inner membrane the cavity of a plastid or a chloroplast is taken up by a jelly like matrix which is known as the stroma. The stroma contains different kinds of proteins which act as enzymes for photosynthetic reactions. In the stroma we find that there are membranous disc like structures known as thylakoids. Now here there is no reason to think that thylakoids are membrane bound structures which look like sacs. They are membranous structures where the membrane has been folded in this way to form sac like structures or disc shaped structures to be more precise. Now these structures or these discs are known as thylakoids. The thylakoids contain chlorophyll pigment. So that is why these thylakoids are also known as photosynthetic thylakoids. The thylakoids are usually stacked one above the other like a pile of coins to form a granum. Several grana are present inside the chloroplast in the stroma and they all remain connected with each other by fine membranes. These membranes are also membranes of the thylakoid and they connect one grana to the other as shown here. We call these membranes stroma lamellae. Now it's very easy to remember biological terms if you understand why they are named so. 
They are lamellae because they are membranes, because the term lamella means membrane and stroma lamellae because they run through the stroma. They are not a part of the grana. Okay? Now these membranes contain enzymes for photosynthetic reactions and the thylakoid contains chlorophyll. A cluster of different kinds of chlorophyll, especially chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B along with several other accessory pigments forms what we call the light harvesting system. In certain reference books you might find the term quantosome which is an old term used for this particular aggregation of different kinds of photosynthetic pigments. Some of these thylakoids or grana, they also remain connected to the inner membrane. Chloroplasts have two regions where photosynthetic reactions take place. A part of the photosynthetic reaction which is called the light phase takes place in the thylakoids whereas the second part of the photosynthetic pigment known as the dark phase takes place in the stroma. Chloroplasts are present in all those parts of a plant body where you can see green color. So it is not essentially only present in leaves but you can find chloroplasts in young stem or if you imagine the stem of a cactus you can also find them in stalk of a flower or a fruit or green tendrils and even on the fruit wall of raw fruits. Just like mitochondria, chloroplasts are also semi-autonomous and they are believed to be prokaryotic symbionts. What does that mean? You all know that mitochondria has its own DNA and protein synthesizing machinery that is ribosomes. Chloroplasts also have that. So they have their naked DNA. What does that mean? In case of eukaryotes, the DNA remains in the form of chromosomes, which means that DNA remains covered by or coiled around different kinds of proteins. It is not alone. 45% of the chromosome is DNA, 45% is protein and the rest of the 10% is RNA. But in case of both mitochondria and chloroplast, we find that the DNA is just like that we see in bacteria. That is, they are without any protein in them. That is why this kind of DNA is known as naked DNA. So let us recapitulate the functions of different types of plastids. Leucoplasts, as we have already discussed, are responsible for storing protein, carbohydrate and lipids. Chromoplasts are responsible for imparting different kinds of color to attract pollinators and also other animals for dispersal. Chloroplasts have the maximum variety of functions. They are responsible for carrying out photosynthetic reactions during which they help in conversion of one form of energy to the other. And what is that? So they are capable of absorbing solar energy with the help of the chlorophyll present in them and converting it into chemical energy in the form of ATP and then in the form of food. They are also responsible for absorption of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. One of the very important functions of chloroplasts because of which we all need plants. So during the dark phase of photosynthetic reaction, chloroplasts are capable of absorbing the carbon dioxide from the air, fixing it into glucose and in turn liberating oxygen into the atmosphere. Chloroplasts are also responsible for storing carbohydrate in the form of starch. And that is why you can see these starch granules inside the chloroplastids. They are responsible for conversion of fatty acid and production of fatty acid so that they can store fat or oil droplets inside them. All right then, let me ask you a question. Can you tell me what is the difference between mitochondria and a plastid on the basis of energy conversion? Do let me know your answers in the comment section below. Looking forward to reading your answers. So that was all about plastids. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do hit the like button and share it with your friends if you did. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell. 
do check out the full courses on our website and android app manocha academy links are given below stay connected and keep learning